Welcome to the last episode of The History Of for 2018. Today we have a slightly different video than normal, as we will be delving into the short-lived, somewhat mysterious, and highly sought-after U.S. experimental urban camouflage uniforms seen throughout the 1990s and early 2000s. As already mentioned, this video's format is going to be a little bit different, as we will be covering a total of four separate patterns which were used by two different branches that range from designed and trialed by the military to bought right off the shelf. This is being done because information on these patterns are scarce, and covering them individually will result in very, very short videos. So let's get right to it. With the 1990s in full swing, the US military had recently seen a shift in the location of combat operations. Whereas in the past, battles and wars were taking place mostly in countrysides, mountains, and jungles, recent engagements had shifted largely to urban cities and high-density population centers. Though the idea of training troops for urban operations can be dated back to at least the late 70s, the need to ramp up urban training increased after the Battle of Mogadishu. It was during this time officials at the Marine Corps Warfighting Laboratory saw the need to prepare their forces to deal with urban combat, occupation procedures, and dealing with large volumes of local civilian populaces. These operations and training exercises would be referred to as MOUT, or Military Operations in Urban Terrain. One of the first things officials did was attempt to develop a camouflage that would work in urban areas, and so the first pattern on our list was created sometime around 1994. The pattern consisted of a very simple design, which was made up of two colors, a primary light tannish gray with sporadic dark gray splotches over it. Using the concept of a reversible uniform, which had been played around with on and off again since World War II, this two-color pattern was developed for the Marine Corps. The idea was that the wearer could easily flip the uniform from the M81 Woodland to this new urban pattern. Aside from the occasional training picture and a few jackets and pants posted online by collectors, not much else is known about it aside from the fact that the pattern was never adopted. The next pattern was then seen in 1998 at the Mount facility in Camp Lejeune in North Carolina during Limited Objective Experiment 1, or LOE-1 for short. This pattern was worn by Charlie Company of the 1st Battalion, 6th Marine Regiment and was just a recolored version of the M81 Woodland pattern. It is highly likely these uniforms were actually just commercially available urban woodland that was very popular during the 1990s with law enforcement, the general public, the entertainment industry, and public enemy security of the first world. Yeah, boy! This assumption is backed up by the lack of any helmet cover, headwear, or accessories printed in the same pattern, as well as the fact that any pieces collectors have run into have commercial tags on them. The specific reason this pattern was used during only this operation is somewhat elusive, but best guess was that it was used as a control or predecessor to the next pattern on our list. In March of 1999, the largest mount exercise, Operation Urban Warrior, began. During this operation, some 700 sailors and 6,000 Marines, along with a few Dutch and British troops, practiced for four days in the San Francisco Bay Area. Of the 6,000 Marines and foreign troops, around 800 of them received a new experimental camouflage pattern. Officially named Urban Mount Pattern, this camouflage soon gained other names such as T-Mount, Urban T, T-Pattern, and T-Block. Though not much info is readily available on the actual camouflage, certain people say early samples of it were seen around 1998, and it was actually the second iteration of a Mount camouflage being trialed by the U.S. military. The first being the dual texture camouflage tested by the U.S. Army's 2nd Armored Cavalry Regiment, stationed in Europe around 1977 to 78. The pattern itself consists of three colors, light gray, dark gray, and black, and has two shapes, the first being a series of hard-edged splotches, and the second being short and long rectangles, which sometimes form into a T. The reason for such a large and oddly shaped pattern was that for the most part, urban centers and cities are very rectangular shaped, and from far away blend into a grayish color. The hope was that this camouflage could capitalize on that effect for ground units. This pattern was seen on BDU shirts and pants, a PASGIT helmet cover, and PASGIT vest cover. Aside from this trial pattern, the operation also saw the testing of a number of other pieces of gear and equipment, which we may delve into at a later date. Like the two previous patterns, the Urban T was never adopted. Much like the dual text camo of the late 70s, it worked rather well but was not seen favorably with forces wearing it. However, it did help lead officials to consider an urban MARPAT pattern in the early 2000s. 
Finally, the fourth and final pattern was seen being worn by certain airmen during the 2001 Guardian Challenge. Guardian Challenge was the third iteration of the U.S. Air Force Missile Command Competition, now known as Global Strike Challenge. This annual event sees various missile, bomb, and air base wings compete against each other in a series of events and activities such as Best Security Force, Best Helicopter Ops, and Best Maintenance Group. The final camouflage was a darker version of the urban woodland trialed by the Marines in 1998. This camo was worn only by certain members of the 45th Space Wing, along with their mascot Snark the Shark, throughout the event. Based on pictures, as well as lack of any real information, it's safe to assume this altered version of the M81 Woodland was nothing more than an off-the-shelf purchase, and wasn't in any way an official trial of a new uniform, but rather one chosen to wear specifically to this event. Today, the two trial uniform pieces have become extremely rare and are highly sought after. They fetch quite a large sum whenever they go up on sale. In regards to the Urban Tea pattern, commercial copies have even become hot collector items, often going for quite a large sum of money. If you want to know more about the collectability side of these camouflages, be sure to keep an eye out for our supplementary video on them coming very soon. While on the topic of supplementary videos, some of you may have noticed we've mentioned them before, but none of them have yet to come out. Well, come the new year, they will start popping up, as we're nearly done setting up a nice studio area to showcase pieces in great detail. Finally, I want to take this opportunity to thank all of my viewers and subscribers for a great 2018. We started this channel in March and have grown quite a bit. This will be our last video until the new year, but we've got quite a few interesting videos, projects, and updates on the horizon and are very excited to start rolling them out in the near future. So, we want to close this video out with wishing everyone happy holidays and a great new year. And as always, be sure to check back in the future or subscribe for more of the history of and other videos here on Uniform History.